Hello learners, uh, welcome to our session today. I am your instructor CPA Ringo Fredericks. In our class today, I want us to focus on valuation of ordinary shares. The concept that I want us to deal with today, basically it is uh, the concept to do with, uh, of course, under Godon's valuation method and we'll be looking at supernormal growth firms. This has been a request for majority of you and uh, that's why I'm doing this so that at least you should have this concept in detail. Starting uh, from scratch, maybe in this case to give you that uh, or rather to engage you to that journey up to where we are today, you'll find that anytime you're talking of valuation of ordinary shares, we normally tend to have various methods that are always used. In this case, methods uh, of valuing our ordinary shares, we have various methods which basically will include aspect to do with the price earnings ratio the price earnings ratio method uh-huh we looked at this number two we normally tend to talk of godon's valuation method that is a godon's valuation method we normally tend to talk of number three net asset liquidation method net asset liquidation net asset liquidation method net asset liquidation method. Talk about number four, we normally tend to talk of uh, the super profits method. Super profits method. Yeah, these are some of the common methods that we normally tend to use in valuing our ordinary shares. Our concept of today, our focus will be on number two, Godon's valuation method. That is where our focus will be. Godon's valuation method. And whenever we are talking about Godon's valuation method, Godon's valuation method of, of course, valuing our ordinary shares, we should always have in mind that Godon's valuation method firms are always categorized into three. That is, firms whereby we normally tend to talk of uh, non growth firms. Talk about non growth firms. Number two, normal growth firms. And finally, super normal growth firm. So you'll find that farms will always be categorized into three these three three categories, whereby for non growth farm the dividends are not growing; they are constant flow through, or same dividends through the time of infinity. Normal growth farm the dividends are growing at a constant rate. Super normal growth farm where our focus will be in this session, we are looking at it having a very unique characteristics whereby on the initial stages of the farm the growth rate is very high the growth rate will decline to a certain point then it will remain constant all through so these are the three farms that we'll be looking at under godon's valuation our focus my good students it is on the supernormal growth farm and that's what a lot us to focus on today so we are having supernormal growth farm at least now you're having a basic where we have come from, right? All the other aspects we had looked at it earlier on. So talk about uh, valuation of ordinary shares. Valuation. Valuation of ordinary shares. Valuation of ordinary shares in a supernormal growth firm. In a supernormal growth farm it is important to understand the basics even before we look at a question right it is very important for us to understand at the basics even before we look at a question now when we are talking of supernormal growth farm which farm are we looking at or in this context what are we looking at so, supernormal growth farm, my good students, you should be able to understand that. These farms, they normally tend to behave in a very unique way. 
Why is Molimo saying that they normally tend to behave in a very unique way? You'll find that in such a case, the dividends will grow at this point. You'll find that the dividends, dividends basically here, the dividends are expected, dividends are expected to grow at a at a very high rate, at a very high rate, at a very high rate on the initial stages of the farm. On the initial stages of the farm. Why do you think they are going to grow at a very high rate on the initial stages of the farm? This is because you'll find that the farms or rather the demand of the farm product is very, is very high. Is very high that's why you'll find that they'll be growing at a very high rate now what will happen my good student you'll find that uh, with time with time okay with time the growth rate will decline with time the growth rate in dividends with time the growth rate is expected To decline the growth rate is expected to decline the growth rate is expected to decline up to a point where it stabilizes up to a point up to a point where it stabilizes then mark this very key very very, very correct what will happen next after that the next thing that will happen you'll find that the dividends will grow at a constant rate throughout and then grow at a constant rate throughout and then grow at a constant rate throughout then grow at a constant rate throughout so what are the characteristics that you're able to uh, pick here we are saying that in such a situation where we are talking of supernormal there are these three stages which you can clearly identify that the dividends are expected to grow at a very high rate on the initial stages of the farm with time the growth rate what will happen to the growth rate the growth rate is expected to decline up to a point where it stabilizes after that what will happen they are going to grow at a constant rate throughout so clearly we can see i'm having three characteristics which will uh, help us to identify uh, to know if we are dealing with a supernormal growth farm on the initial stages the rate growth rate is very high of dividends this growth rate will decline up to a certain point where it's going to stabilize after which is going to remain constant throughout so this will clearly give us a characteristic of a super normal growth farm. Then the next question will be, how then will you determine the intrinsic value of such a share in this farm? So how will you determine the PO, the intrinsic value, intrinsic value of the shares in such a farm? That is very important to understand. You'll find that at this point, I'll be having two components to consider. I'll be expected to determine the present value of expected dividends. Okay? Up to the point of stabilization. We are talking of expected present value of expected you see expected dividends we add what the present value of the shares kindly underline now we are talking of shares the present value of the shares immediately immediately after stabilization immediately after stabilization immediately after stabilization 
immediately after stabilization. So here we are talking of number one, the present value of expected dividends up to the point of stabilization. Then the other bit we are talking of the present value of shares. So we are having present value of dividends and present value of shares. The key question, this is just a reminder. Do you guys recall how to determine the present value? Recall the present value, we can either talk of lump sum or we can talk of what? Annuity. When we are talking of lump sum, recall we should always be having what? Our cash flows here, we multiply by the present value interest factor given our rate and number of years. <coughs> Excuse. What about annuity? Your cash flows, you multiply by the present value interest factor annuity given the number given the rate a number of years key element is do you recall how to determine these factors my good students do you recall how to determine these factors those are another important question that again you should always be having in your fingertips because recall like for us to determine this factor we should always be talking of one plus r raised to power negative n and for us to talk of this factor what should we always be having? 1 minus 1 plus r raised to power negative period. We divide by r. Very important aspects or concepts to always remember. What about the expected dividends? Recall, for us to determine the expected dividends, which normally refer to it as d1, d1 will always be equal to our current dividends into 1 plus g these are things that we did these are things that we did this is just a reminder on what we uh, handled last time so these are very important concepts that at any given point you're dealing with dividends more so valuation in a supernormal growth firm these are some of the items that should always be at your fingertips for us to make sure and cement this concept i want us to consider this question i want us to consider this question of ours here There's a question that I've shared on the screen. Believing that all of us were able to see that question. Illustration question number one. Uh huh. Illustration question number one. I believe that all of us you are able to see the question so that we go through it together. So that we go through it together. Believing that you're able to see that question. Mm hmm. With you, you can literally download the question. You can literally download that question to enable you to work it out. We are looking at illustration question number one. We are looking at illustration question number one. That is for Chigiri Limited. And by the way, remember, like, uh, if at all you wish to join our classes for financial management, you can always reach us out on the number indicated just below the screen. You can always reach us out. That is for any component of financial management. Should it be CPA? Should it be whichever course that you're doing? You're doing uh, your master's. You're doing your BCom uh, or uh, your degree. Any concept or any course that has financial management. Because remember, financial management is universal, right? So at any given point, whenever you feel like uh, you need an assistance or you need a uh, the content in relation to financial management, you can always reach us out. So these are what you are told that uh, Chigiri is a private company which intends to be listed in the Securities Exchange. The company has recently made a dividend issue of 3.20 per share. This dividend is expected to grow at the rate of 15% per annum for two years and then drop to 12% per annum for the next three years. What is happening there? We are told that I'm having this case. Uh -huh. On the initial stage, the dividends will be growing at 15%. Then it will drop 12%. Thereafter, the dividends will grow at 6% per annum indefinitely. 
So the required rate of return is 11%. You are required to determine the intrinsic value of the shares. Very important concept and uh, basically detail that I'm given there. So we are required to determine the intrinsic value. Let me see if I can squeeze this question. I'm just going to squeeze it down there. I'm more interested in the details. So always, 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 my good students, always, 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 first thing that you need to do is to make sure that you have this formula at the back of your mind. You see the first thing that you need to do is to make sure that you have this formula. That's the first thing that you need to do to make sure that you're having this formula. Once you have the formula, then identify the rates that you're given there. Because clearly you can see that question depicts characteristics of a supernormal growth firm. The question clearly depicts characteristics of supernormal growth firm. The question clearly depicts characteristics of supernormal growth firm. So, we have identified the formula, we have it. We've seen the question clearly depicts characteristics of supernormal growth firm, right? Where we know very well that I should be having this in mind. I should be having my present value, or rather our PO, present value of B1 up to the point of stabilization. So, allow me to be using the shortcuts here. Present value of expected dividends of B1 up to the point of stabilization. Then we are going to add the present value of the shares immediately after stabilization, immediately after stabilization immediately after stabilization very key to note right so once i have that formula down we identify that characteristics that we've noted in relation to supernormal growth firm whereby if i told you to look at a growth in dividends this is what you are given right you are told with a good examiner that this dividends are expected to grow at what rate we are told that growth rate is as follows one to two years we are told that they will be expected to grow at a rate of 15 percent per annum right then for the next three years that is uh this dividend is expected to grow at the rate of 15 percent per annum for two years and that is uh and then drop 12 percent for the next three years so the next three years is Three, four, five. So three to the fifth year, it is going to be is going is expected to drop at the rate of twelve percent as per what I was given there, believing that you're able to see the question. Then what is happening? Thereafter the dividends will grow at a six percent per annum indefinitely. Then year six to a period that we don't know which is infinity is going to grow at the rate of six percent per annum. You see, it clearly depicts characteristics of the supernormal growth firm. And that's why we have to use this formula of ours. That's why we have to use that formula of ours. Uh -huh. Believing that you're able to see the question and clearly, you can see this characteristic there, right? Uh -huh. So once we have that identified, our good examiner has given us our DO. The current dividends that we just paid, what are we told? The current dividends that we just paid amounted to 3.20. 3.20. Whereas the discount factor, which in this case is our rate, the discount factor of good examiner has given us a total percentage. The required rate of return is 11%. The required rate of return is 11%. So how are we going to prepare our... PO of this supernormal growth firm, the value of these shares. That will be simple. I'm going to have my years here. One, 
टू थ्री फोर फाइव as per what I was given there. After that, the next item to consider is what about our expected dividends? D1. What about our D1? Where D1, remember, we are talking of DO. D1 is equal to DO into 1 plus G. Very important to understand that. Allow me to remove this question so that at least you can have one thing uh, aspect here. I'm having this bit now. So, this is what you are having. Our current dividends, the one that we just paid, was 3.20. 1 plus our growth rate in year 1. Growth rate in year 1 is 15%. So, 0.15. This will give us how much? 1.15 times 3.20. This should give us 3.68. Believe that you guys have understood how we've arrived at that. Believe that you guys have understood how we've arrived at that. Meaning that in year 2, the O will be 3.68. 1 plus 0 0.15 because you are still in year 2. The growth rate was 15%. Uh -huh, that will give us how much? Uh -huh. That will give us, of course, 1.15 times my answer. This should give us aspect of uh, 3.68. I'm having 1.15 times 3.68. This should give us 4.23. Kindly confirm if we are on the same page, 4.23. The next period, which is in period three, year 3, 4.23 will be our current dividends. 1 plus our growth rate now in year 3 to 5, we are having 12% because it declined. So 0 0.12. So that should give us what? 1.12 times 4.23. This should give us 4.73. Uh -huh. Year 4, what will we be having? 4.73, 1 plus 0 0.12, which would give us 1.12 times 4.73 to give us 5.30. Mm -hmm. So that year 5 here, year 5, we should be having 5.30 into 1 plus 0 0.12, right? So that you should be having 5.30 times 1.12 to give us 5.94. So this is our D1. <coughs> that is our D1. Remember our focus is to determine what? Our focus is to determine the present value. So therefore, I have to incorporate my present value into this factor. 11%. That is what I was given. 11%. Because you are told that it stabilizes from year 6. And from year 6, therefore, we should be required to determine what? The present value of the shares immediately after stabilization. It is stabilized actually at the end of year 5, right? So year 6 onwards, it was will be required to determine the present value of the shares. And that's why you can see we don't have year 6 here. Because it stabilized to the point of stabilization. It was stabilizing at year 5, right? At the end of year 5. So what will be our present value interest factor? Recall the concept of present value interest factor given rate number of years 1 plus R raised for negative N. You pick your calculator here. We have 1 plus R, which is 11%. So I'm having 1 plus 0 0.11, which is basically 1.11. So 1.11. You see in your calculator, there is basically sign of raised to. That sign of raised to. That sign of raised to. It is a 
where you are having what? Square root times that sign in your calculator. So you have that value raised to power negative 1. So that should give me into four decimal places our factor 0 0.9009. To determine for the next year, in that case, I give you the shortcut. Instead of you repeating the formula, what you need to do, you see, after you have determined this negative one, after you having your solution here, which is 0 0.9009, all you need to do is to divide this one by 1 plus r. You divide by 1 plus r, where in this case, my 1 plus r is 1 plus 0 0.11, which will literally give us 1.11. So I'm going to have my answer. I divide by 1.11 to give us for the next period 0 0.8116 divide by 1.11 to give us 0 0.7312 divide by 1.11 to give us 0 0.6 587 we divide by 1.11 to give us 0 0.5935 so we have determined our present value in test factor so can we determine our present value yes we can determine our present value so we take the first one 3.68 you multiply by 0 0.9009. This should give us, of course, a value of 3.3.32. 3 4 times 0.8116. This should give us 3.43. 4.73 we multiply by 0 0.7312. This should give us 3.46. 0 0.6587, you multiply by 5.30. This should give us 3.49. <clears throat> then finally, we should be talking of 5.94, you multiply by 0 0.5935. This should give us 3.53. So, you determine now that value, which will give us what? The value after summing them up, 3.32 plus 3.43 plus 3.46 plus 3.49 plus 3.53. In this case, I'm getting 17.23. 17.23. So, so, whatever that we have here, is basically the first bit, the present value of D1 up to the point of stabilization. What about the present value of shares immediately after stabilization? The present value of these shares immediately after stabilization, therefore, I should be looking at what our present value of our shares that is now in year six onwards. So I should be having our do the current dividends now which is just in year five into one plus g of what into one plus g of course i should be having my ke minus g i should be having our ke minus g very important for you to always have that in mind so that as at the end of the day after determining this see i want my present value then I just multiply by our present value interest factor. Present value interest factor up to that point of stabilization. Uh, given, of course, our rate. And uh, basically given our rate and number of years. Which is now, of course, to uh, a point of uh, basically immediately after stabilization, right? So therefore, in this case, we'll be looking at our rate which is 11, in which year? Year 5. 
So what will you be having in this context, my good students? That will be very easy. Now I know you can work this one out. So at this point, we should be talking of <coughs> our d5. That is 5.94 into 1 plus g 0 0.11. That is a 0. Point. Immediately after stabilization, we are talking of 6%, right? Immediately after stabilization, we are talking of 6%. So basically, I'll be having here our 6% growth rate, 0, 0.6, immediately after stabilization, into our cost of equity, which is 0 0.11, minus our growth rate, 0 0.06. So first of all, that should give us which value? That should give us 1.06 times 5.94 we divide by 0 0.11 minus 0 0.06 to give us 125 we multiply by our present value interest factor 11% fifth year which was 0 0.5935 this is what you are determining that is what I am taking times 0 0.5935 which will give us 74.73 so we need now our present value therefore I should be taking present value of expected dividends up to the point of stabilization 17.23 we add present value for shares immediate after stabilization which is 74.73 so if you sum this up what will you be having? 74.73.74 actually 0 0.74 0 0.74 we add 17.23 in this case I'm getting 91.97 that should be our intrinsic value of these shares of supernormal supernormal growth firm supernormal growth firm 91.97 which you can literally translate this to what 92 and that is what you are expected basically to determine in this question of ours you see following the same following just simple procedure and you are home and you are home so basically that was uh, your request guys we've done that question kindly uh, for those who wish to join cpa classes for financial management classes are on you can also basically select your pre-recorded version package. It will be of great help. Or you can decide to join our live virtual sessions, which are also ongoing. To this point, guys, thank you so much. Let us meet in our next session, where I'll be giving you more insight in relation to financial management. You have a nice time, and see you in our next class. Thank you.